I didn't know about that enormous crater that's in um, Antarctica. Joe Rogan just announced the terrifying truth about Antarctica. Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth and is the fifth largest continent in the world, but it also is undoubtedly one of the most mysterious places on Earth, despite it only being officially discovered in 1820. What is fascinating is that it features on a map drawn in the 1500s, which we know was based on older source maps. Now what the fuck is it doing on a map drawn in the 1500s when nobody knew it existed in the 1500s? To me, the obvious answer is we are dealing with the fingerprints of a lost civilization. Nobody in the 1500s was supposed to be aware of its existence. But the fact is that they were. So how did the ancients know about Antarctica? Is it possible that we are dealing with the remnants of a lost civilization that once inhabited Antarctica? And what are some of the strangest and most shocking facts about this frozen continent? We'll find out in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. The continent of Antarctica is sparsely populated housing less than 10,000 inhabitants despite its enormous land mass of 13.66 million square kilometers. As one of the most uninhabited places in the world, it has sparked significant exploration efforts and many have tried to unveil its deepest secrets. Joe Rogan, potentially the world's most popular podcaster, is one such person. Over the years, his podcast has featured numerous scientists and explorers who have shared previously unknown secrets about this remote region. Joe Rogan's podcast has been running for over a decade. During this time, he and his guests have proposed a wide range of fascinating theories and arguments, so it's rare to see Joe Rogan utterly taken aback. But in a 2022 episode of his podcast, he received a shocking revelation about Antarctica that left him stunned. In August 2022, Joe Rogan hosted fellow podcaster and comedian Sam Tripoli. During their discussion, Sam explained the events of Operation High Jump. No. Have you ever heard of uh, Operation uh, High Jump? A military exercise that took place in Antarctica in the mid-20th century. This operation was said to involve President Harry Truman, Nazis, and even extraterrestrials. In reality, Operation High Jump, officially titled the United States Navy Antarctic Developments Program, did exist. The exercise was carried out from 1946 to 1947 and was led by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd. On February 1, 1947, the expedition scheduled for eight months of work arrived in Antarctica in the area of Queen Maud Land. Rear Admiral Byrd's expedition was considered strictly scientific, but it was funded by the U.S. Navy. They went to Antarctica accompanied by the aircraft carrier Casablanca, 25 planes and seven helicopters on board, a submarine, an icebreaker, and 12 tankers, on which there were 4,800 people. At the time, the official statement was that the expedition's main mission was to find coal and other resources, train military personnel in extremely cold conditions, while evaluating the feasibility of establishing military bases in Antarctica. Meanwhile, we can't help but wonder why they needed 32 planes, 13 ships, and nearly 5,000 people, many of whom died afterwards. President Truman and the American government had been curious about Antarctica, particularly as the region was largely untapped. They were interested in establishing American sovereignty over the area. However, Sam explained to Joe that, according to journals written by Admiral Byrd, the Navy commander had reportedly made contact with Nazi UFOs. It's later learned that the real purpose of the mission was to retrieve the missing Nazi leaders from their base in Antarctica. Large-scale work on aerial photography was carried out. A polar station was equipped. Then many strange messages appeared on the air. They're attacking us. We're suffering heavy losses. It is not known who Rear Admiral Byrd was at war with. But on March 3rd, 1947, all work was suddenly stopped and the expedition hurriedly returned to America. But how did the Nazi happen to be on Antarctica? In January 1939, a German expedition reached the continent of Antarctica, claiming a part of its land. This region was named New Swabia and has been the subject of many legends. Rumors spread that not only was a secret base established on its territory, 
but it also served as Adolf Hitler's last refuge. Some even suggested that the Germans discovered a whole system of ice caves in Antarctica where they built a massive city. Sam claimed that the Nazis had negotiated a deal with extraterrestrials to utilize their advanced technology during World War II. It is unclear why this technology was not used in the actual war or why the aliens remained in Antarctica after the conflict. According to Sam, Operation High Jump's leaders eventually returned to President Truman, forming him that they had to make a deal with the alien. The president supposedly complied, allowing the aliens to conduct experiments on humans. Remarkably, these experiments were said to have been conducted in our national parks and forests. This intriguing tale extends to the story of the missing 411 a series of unresolved cases involving individuals who have disappeared in national parks across the USA. The missing 411 chronicles sudden disappearances on national lands, with many of the missing individuals seemingly sharing several common characteristics. While much of Sam's account appears to be a grand conspiracy theory, it does raise questions about what truly happens in Antarctica and the nature of the military exercises conducted there. One of the significant reasons why Antarctica is sparsely populated is unsurprisingly due to its extreme cold. Antarctica's chilling climate is widely known, but many people often underestimate how cold it can be. Over the years, this secluded and scenic place has attracted numerous adventurers, whether for digging, running, skiing, or hiking. However, to survive, these adventurers must abide by a strict dress code and continually adjust their attire to accommodate the harsh weather conditions. Joe Rogan once interviewed Colin O'Brady, one of the world's renowned adventurers and endurance athletes. Colin gained fame after completing the first solo, unsupported, human-powered crossing of Antarctica's landmass in 2018. In an episode, Colin spoke about his entire journey and the measures he had to take to endure the brutal climate. Interestingly, Colin was not exaggerating about the danger of sweating in Antarctica. According to the official tourism website for Antarctica, there is a stern warning against sweating, particularly in the winter. You know, people who have been in the polar environments will say is, if you sweat, you die. This is because sweating saturates your clothes with moisture, which can freeze the outer layer of your outfit. As you start to warm up, these frozen layers can melt leading to potentially harmful consequences. This can be particularly challenging for someone like Colin, who had to do a considerable amount of physical exertion, including lifting and moving. While some people may enjoy cold climates, surviving in an environment where sweating could endanger your life doesn't seem appealing. If you ever plan to visit Antarctica, it's essential to keep your sweating in check. By this point, it's clear that venturing into Antarctica isn't straightforward. Given the extremely cold climate and the threat of frostbite, the continent isn't necessarily the most welcoming destination. Here's the thing, though. Even if you did want to visit Antarctica, there's a limit to how much you would be able to do that. This is because of something called the Antarctic Treaty System. In 1959, a treaty was signed between 12 countries. Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the USSR. The Antarctic Treaty essentially states that the continent doesn't belong to any single country. Just as well, all countries agree to pretty much respect the rights of each other on the continent and only use it for research and a little bit of tourism. The entire point of the treaty is to ensure that the environment is protected and that no man-made activity, including and especially industrialization and war, can threaten the biodiversity of the continent. The Antarctic Treaty only ensures that all human activity in Antarctica is properly planned and managed. From tourism and exploration to scientific research, Everything needs to be done in accordance with the treaty rules and regulations. While it doesn't prevent tourists or military personnel from being present in Antarctica, anyone looking to be present on this continent will need a permit from a treaty party. Antarctica's underground lakes exploration, as well as the Antarctic Ocean, has been pretty extensive over the past few decades. In the 1970s, Scientists came upon a major breakthrough that demonstrated just how much of this region has been untapped since the dawn of time. They discovered that an entirely different ecosystem was existing and thriving in the Antarctic waters. To date, 
An estimated 400 lakes have been found beneath the surface of the Antarctic floor. These lakes sit on their three kilometers of ice. And scientists believe that the lakes were formed during the separation of Antarctica from Gondwana land, a supercontinent that broke up during the Jurassic period. Thanks to underwater pressure, the lakes have managed to continue flowing all these years instead of just freezing up and becoming moving blocks of ice. Lake Vostok, which was discovered in the 1990s, remains the largest subglacial lake discovered in the region. Lying at 2.5 kilometers below the ice, the lake at a temperature that clocked in at minus 3 degrees, despite being covered by ice for 20 million years. Lakes like this have also been found to hold existing ecosystems of microorganisms. Even though these species haven't been exposed to light in millions of years, they continue to exist and thrive thanks to gases like methane and ammonium, which they can use to create energy. The world's oldest pyramid whenever you hear about pyramids your mind most likely races off to reference Egypt. Hey, we've all been there. The pyramids of Giza are the most popular pyramids in the world, showing a massive ingenuity and creativity on their own. However, what if the Egyptian pyramids aren't the oldest in the world? Back in 2016, satellites hovering above the Antarctic region found something rather strange. A weird formation that appeared to be peering out from the ice. It appeared that the ice had melted away and this formation was pretty much peeking its little nose out on the region. It was difficult to reach. Scientists believe that this was the top of a man-made pyramid that was erected hundreds of thousands of years ago. At the very least, the fact that there are man-made pyramids in Antarctica tends to lend some credence to the belief that humans actually settled in this area before we knew anything. Some scientists even believe that these pyramids show that there was an entire civilization of humans that lived in this region. However, for now, it is impossible to gather much evidence, since that area is pretty much inaccessible. Still though, what are the possibilities that a place so cold and uninhabitable as Antarctica could actually have held a civilization of people? Artifacts dating back thousands of years have been found leading some to theorize that an ancient culture existed on Earth before modern humans. In 2017, a team of geologists from the Alfred Wagener Institute for Polar Marine Research in Germany went to Antarctica and collected core samples from deep within its frozen seafloor. Their objective was to analyze what the continent's climate might have been like in earlier times, and what they found was quite interesting. Essentially, the geological team is hypothesizing that while Antarctica's climate today might not support much life, it wasn't necessarily always like that. Antarctica has survived a meteorite hit. Meteorites are among the biggest harbingers of extinction in the known universe. Whenever a meteorite hits a planet or a surface, it is pretty much a recipe for catastrophe. Just think back to the dinosaurs. Those animals were probably living on their own in their own prehistoric utopia, and boom, a meteorite hit, and the planet quite literally had to start again. Interestingly, however, it appears that there was an even bigger meteorite hit that took place in Antarctica, one which could predate the dinosaurs and which, according to sources including Joe Rogan himself, could have been much worse. Recently, Joe had YouTube earned independent researcher Jimmy Corsetti, as well as content creator and author Ben Van Kerwick on his podcast. In it, the three men spoke extensively on ancient humans as well as their ability to survive extinction-level events. As part of this monologue, Joe pulled up an interesting report. According to reports, this meteorite crater was discovered back in 2006 in a joint mission organized by NASA and the German Aerospace Center. The objective of this mission had been to try and measure regularities in the Earth's gravitational field, which would then show the distribution of mass across the planet, as well as changes in the metric. Over time, scientists have come to believe that the meteorite responsible for creating a massive crater in Antarctica could have triggered a global extinction-level event. This belief stems from the idea that the collision caused an enormous amount of dust to rise into the atmosphere, rendering the entire planet hostile towards all forms of life. In this scenario, months of darkness and caustic acid rain would have rendered the planet uninhabitable. 
yet a few primordial shellfish managed to survive this fallout. These resilient shellfish would have evolved to become the ancestors of the dinosaurs, which ended up becoming the dominant species on the planet for the next 200 million years before another meteorite came and wiped them out. Antarctica, as we mentioned earlier, is a highly secluded place. Gaining access to the continent can be tricky unless you have a clearly defined objective. Even if you manage to gain access to Antarctica, you wouldn't be able to explore it in its entirety. Tourists, hikers, and others are only granted access to a small portion of the landmass, where they can engage in activities and enjoy the sights. Several sectors of the continent are closed off, accessible only to researchers and military personnel. Think of these regions as the Area 51 of Antarctica. No one really knows what is going on there, and many suspect that it could be a secretive spot where experiments or other operations are carried out. According to some sources, people who have attempted to sneak into these restricted areas have been seized and immediately taken inside by guards. No one has been able to report what happens after that, and it's widely believed that these individuals were never seen or heard from again. The official explanation is that these areas are off-limits because governments are trying to protect biodiversity and potentially endangered species residing there. However, it wouldn't be surprising if there's something else, something a bit fishy, happening in this region. It all just seems a little too strange, doesn't it? One other weird phenomenon is called the third man factor. If you're not an explorer or a daredevil, there's a chance you might never have encountered this phenomenon. However, for many who have ventured into remote places like Antarctica, this phenomenon seems as real as daylight. The third man factor is a term used to describe the overwhelming sense of another presence, especially when insignificant distress or facing great danger. People often describe it as a feeling like there's someone walking with them or guiding them, even though they're alone. Due to Antarctica's unusual periods of light and darkness, Many visitors to the continent have reported feeling this sensation. Some have even claimed to have experienced hallucinations and seen shadows cast by nothing while traversing the region's seemingly infinite plain. One notable encounter occurred in the early 1900s when Sir Ernest Shackleton, a famous British explorer, led an expedition to Antarctica. His expedition, which ran from August 1914 to January 1917, sought to be the first to traverse the Antarctic continent by land. According to Shackleton's accounts, he and his two companions were trying to travel by boat to South Georgia Island. They decided to stop and search for food and shelter. During their trek, the companions suddenly felt the presence of a fourth person walking with them. They walked for 36 hours over mountains and glaciers, all the while feeling as if there were four people in their group. Since then, Many others who have felt lost or stranded while exploring Antarctica have reported experiencing the same phenomena. It could be related to the desperation of the situation, or perhaps it's something unique to the environment of Antarctica itself. Finally, let's talk about the Blood Falls, one of the most eerie discoveries in Antarctica over the past few years. Located in the continent's McMurdo Dry Valleys, the Blood Falls is a five-story high waterfall that pours out from a glacier into a lake. Its unique color is so striking against the backdrop of white snow and glaciers that it's been named for its resemblance to flowing blood. The Blood Falls were first discovered in 1911 by Thomas Griffith Taylor, a geologist who had led several expeditions to Antarctica. The glacier from which the waterfall emerges was eventually named after Taylor in his honor. For a long time, Scientists were unsure as to why the waterfall exhibited its unique color. When Taylor initially discovered it, he believed that algae had discolored the water. However, scientists later discovered that the Blood Falls was once a very salty lake that had been sealed off from the atmosphere due to the formation of ice. This isolation caused an increase in the water's salt content, which prevents it from freezing even in the harshest weather conditions. Moreover, the water contains a high concentration of iron, which lends it its blood-red color. Additionally, the water does not have any access to oxygen or sunlight, which gives it an even darker hue. And now, 
What if we tell you that a lot of people have actually made UFO sightings in Antarctica? Back in October 2020, someone was scanning satellite imagery of Antarctica when they came across an interesting discovery. They immediately shared it with author Brad Olson, and he was quite shocked to come upon the same thing. A metallic-looking object, half covered in ice, appeared to have been peeking out of the land surface and it looked suspiciously like an alien spacecraft. Olsen believes that an alien spacecraft must have been left there thousands of years ago, only to be covered up by the immense layers of ice in the region. However, why would it be that an alien civilization visiting Earth would choose Antarctica of all places to settle? Well, according to experts, the fact that Antarctica has grown to be such a cold, uninhabitable place for humans doesn't necessarily mean that other life forms won't be able to thrive there. It is possible that an alien race looking to visit our planet would feel more comfortable in a place like Antarctica than they would feel elsewhere. Telling you that there's ice in Antarctica is a bit like telling you that the sun is hot. It's pretty obvious. But there's something quite interesting about the ice in this region. Some of it actually gives off sound. When some researchers set out to explore the ice shelves in Antarctica, they were pleasantly surprised to come across a glacier that gives off melodic sound. The Ross Ice Shelf, as it was named, appears to have a thing for giving off sound and making music, like a singing ice. The Ross Ice Shelf is the largest of its kind in Antarctica, with a size that rivals all of France. When winds blow across its dunes and crash against its surface, the collision creates vibrations that produce continuous seismic tones. This means that the shelf pretty much sings at all times. However, the sounds aren't audible to human ears. Scientists had to use seismic sensors to listen to them. Another interesting fact is that the sound appears to change as the weather changes too. So. Scientists now use the sounds, as well as changes in the sounds, to measure the ice shelf stability and vulnerability to climatic conditions. Antarctica, the land of mysteries and secrets, presents some of the harshest conditions and the most beautiful scenery in the world. It's pretty fascinating to think that there is an expanse of land on our planet that hasn't yet been fully explored. Antarctica is the coldest region on Earth, with an estimated 90% of the world's ice. Being the most isolated place on Earth, it remains largely unexplored, promising many more exciting discoveries in the future. We bow before you, and thank you for watching another episode of Secret Origins. Keep your minds open, and until we meet again.